Is training with chains like training with cables? Uh, that's a question I got asked in my comments, and I actually, it wasn't even a question. I had a subscriber the other day who actually said, oh yeah, it's, it's just like using cables when you're using chains, because he saw me doing the smaller exercises with the chains, like these tricep extensions you see up above. And what people need to understand is that that's actually not true at all. That's not even remotely true. And I'll discuss in a bit why powerlifters oftentimes use chains. We usually use chains uh, for our big lifts. We use them for resistance training. We use them to get around the law of accommodation. We use them for speed work, uh, acceleration training, all this stuff, right? But a lot of times when you're used for smaller exercises like this, people get this idea. They're like, oh, it's just like a cable because they think in terms of a cable having a strength curve, right? And they see us with the chains on the floor and it's lighter at the bottom and heavier at the top because as you guys see just like we do when we hook them onto a barbell what happens the chain unloads at the bottom half the weight or more in some cases in some cases almost all of it like on those extensions that's almost all the weight it's a majority it's unloaded at the bottom and a lot of times when we bench or squat or whatever with them it's a hundred percent of the weight unloaded at the bottom some of these exercises it's half of it depends on the exercise right like, aha, so it's just like a cable because a cable has a strength curve. But that's, that's not actually true. We'll say, what do you mean? Well, you have to be very careful with your exercise selection with chains. Chains can actually be dramatically superior in the strength curve to a cable if you pick the exercise appropriately. The reason cables seem to, in some cases, you have a weak point with the cable is because you have a weak point in the leverages. And what I mean is, your triceps or your biceps or your delts or any other exercise or your pecs, let's say you're doing flies, you do know it's stronger at certain positions, right? And it has to do with the leverages involved with the joint angle and the way the muscles insert. And a lot of people don't realize this because they think of the cables as being uh, like a machine in the sense that it, it's, it's taking them through a different plane of motion than they would think of as a free weight, but it's a static weight. And that's going to come as a shock to a lot of people because they're used to doing small movements. And on smaller exercises, we notice that strength discrepancy more, right? If you think about it, an actual cable machine that's just a pulley with plates and doesn't have a cam on it, right? If it's just round pulleys, circular pulleys, if you were to go measure your cable station and you say you put the 100 pounds of tension on there, if it measures 100 pounds at the top, if you pull it all the way to the floor, you pull that cable five feet it's still going to measure within a few percents if it's 200 at the top it's going to be 200 at the middle 200 in the bottom there is no variable tension there is no contrast weight and i think that comes as a shock to a lot of people they're like what like yeah it's exactly the same as a free weight exercise in regard to that it's exactly the same your line of pull is all that matters now are you stronger at certain points on a tricep extension than another? Yes, but that's because the elbow and the tricep are at different angles. It's not that the weight is different. Not that the weight's different at all. Do you know why it's different from a free weight? Because it doesn't rely on gravity. It relies on a line of pull. And did you know that the point of angle that you pull from that pulley is, is like gravity pulling, right? Because the gravity is pulling down on the weight stack, that's creating a line of pull through that cable. Well, that cable is just simulating the way gravity is pulling on the weight for you. Even though it's in a pulley system, they're usually fairly smooth pulleys. It's just a straight line of pull. So in other words, when you pull on a cable, at no matter what angle you're at, it's just like the same force pulling at the same way gravity pulls a free weight down, except it pulls it towards the pulley. It's not really a difference, is there? The reason a lot of people like cables for small exercises is why? Because they can get whatever angle they want. They can adjust that pulley or seating or whatever for a small movement to pull the line of pull where they want it to. When you're doing a free weight exercise, you have to adjust your body to get it in whatever lineup you want. But the effect is more or less the same. More or less the same. You have a straight line of pull that is the force pulling. In the case of the, the cable, the gravity is pulling on the weight down on the stack and that's pulling through the pulley and through the cable. All right, so that's what happens with the cable. That's your direct line of pull as if it was gravity. 
when you're lifting a weight off the floor, it's just gravity working directly against the weight, but it's still a straight line. It's still a straight line of pull with the same resistance all the way through. And when you say that, then people say, oh, wow, I, never, I didn't even realize that. What people are thinking of sometimes are that you have certain machines over the years that were developed that have a cam. So a lot of times there's a strap. Like if you go to some of those uh, perfect examples, some of those preacher curl machines, you'll notice that it's not a perfect circle, that that, that little rubber band that's attaching to the handle that rolls across that cam, that cam is irregular shaped. In other words, it changes the resistance because it changes the length of the lever arm. So that at certain points on it, it is harder than others. So therefore, it can make the weight heavier at the top of the preacher curl and lighter at the bottom. Why? Well, we're stronger at the top of a curl. We have better peak contraction there. That's where you get more muscle fiber recruitment. So it's designed in a way to give you better strength at the peak contraction on those cams. If you did that with a cable, that actually wouldn't occur. That's why people have to squeeze that cable to get that same effect. They work on the isometrics because you can lock at the top. You can contract more weight than you can move at the bottom. That's why you can do more weight on those preacher curls. But if you use that cam, it's harder. It gets harder as it goes up. Well, that's not always the case with a free weight, and it's not always the case with a cable, so that's why they do that squeeze. But you have a cam changing the, the actual strength curve. That's what a chain does. A chain does the same thing. The chain makes it lighter at the bottom and heavier at the top. For the same reason we do it on a bench press, right? Why do we do it on the bench press? Change the strength curve. If we're doing it for speed work, we're, we're training ourselves to decelerate differently. We don't decelerate as fast at the top because normally when you go to lock a big movement, the weight slows down as you get near the end. And it does because it's your body's way to keep you from hurting yourself. But it will also cause you to miss a lift. We lose energy, we use up energy, and then we decelerate. By using chains, we train ourselves to lock it harder because we change the deceleration. We're used to having to push harder near the top because it's heavier. Because we're stronger at the top than the bottom. We're stronger because of the same thing we just discussed with the levers and moment arms and everything else involved in your body. It doesn't take as much work. The muscle doesn't have to contract as hard near the top to move the same weight. So the muscle doesn't have to work quite as hard because there's less tension being put on, say, the pecs and the triceps and stuff. The pecs are more so affected by it at the bottom than the triceps are, but they are affected. That's why we think of as the top as more of a tricep. It's not that they, they aren't stronger at the top, too. It's just they're not as quite affected by the actual levers and moment arms as the pecs are at the bottom. They're still affected by it, though. It is disproportionate. So we do that with that so that we have to work harder. In other words, most guys can lock out 100 pounds more than they can flat bench off their chest, right? They can lock out 100 pounds or more more than their max bench. So we do the change to make the top work just as hard. We change the deceleration curve. Now, in the case of a smaller movement, we do it because you're able to bring more muscle fibers to bear in the more contracted position and you oftentimes have better levers. So if, we, if I use something like a chain, I am creating variable resistance to make the muscles work harder at the contracted position if and only if I select an exercise that allows me to do so. So if you look at the way I do those, those tricep rollouts, if you look at the, the angles involved, those are harder to get the weight started at the bottom and you can move a heavier weight easier at the top. Well, that means you can run a lot of chain tension. It's the same thing with a lateral raise if I use the chain for the lateral raise. We can't use as much side delt at the bottom, but as it goes up, the, the side delt works really hard as you start approaching 90 degrees from the body. As you start getting up there, the side delt really, really struggles to work hard. And so if I've got a lot of chain weight right there, it forces that muscle to work hardest at the point of peak contraction. Well, a lot of times for, say, the, the side delt, that's a part of the muscle that doesn't get worked as much. Those fibers don't get worked as much when we're doing a lot of our rows or face pulls or bench pressing or, or even overhead pressing in some cases, right? So it creates a position for them to where they're having to work the hardest and I have the heaviest weight there where I'm, I'm able to recruit the most muscle fibers. It's a different strength curve. So it's totally different from cables. In fact, it's the exact opposite because a cable is a continual tension. We have a graduated tension with the chains. 
And bands are a whole different animal. They're, they have their own separate training effect, completely different from just the mechanical uh, resistance involved. So for people who think that the chains, they'll try to compare them to cables, they're, they're really not. Cables are actually more like free weights are just changing the direction of gravity and the direction of pull to where the pulley is instead of the floor. And you just adjust the exercise accordingly. Chains actually change the resistance curve itself at the level of the weight, not at the level of the joint and muscle. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.